Hello, and welcome to the Intentional Life Podcast. I am Courtney Asher. And I'm Ben Cornick. And we are here with Christ the Rock Community Church in Menasha, Wisconsin, talking about the intentional life of a disciple. Uh, what does it mean to grow as a disciple? And what does it mean to make disciples of Jesus? Mm. Uh, so last episode, we talked about our definition of a disciple. And we broke down this invitation um, from Matthew where Jesus said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And so we said our definition of a disciple then is someone who's following Jesus, being changed by Jesus, and committed to the mission of Jesus. Well, today we're going to do a deep dive on just the first part, on the following Jesus part. So we just yeah. want to talk about that a little while. What does it mean to actually follow Jesus? Mm -hmm. um, we know that this involves a head level change. And so we talked last time a little bit about making that decision mm -hmm. to follow Christ. Yes. Um, and before we go too much further, I just want to ask everyone who's listening, have you made that decision today? Hmm. Because if you haven't made that decision or you're going, I'm not sure what you're talking about, or maybe I've identified as a Christian, Yeah. maybe I'm someone who's gone to church occasionally or had family members who have, or I think I am, but I'm not sure. Um, let us just walk through what it means to actually make a decision to follow Christ. Absolutely. So Ben, would you share with us a little bit, how do we make that decision and what is really the invitation from Christ that we need to decide about um, yeah. following? Well, and I think this is really important. Because there, there are times where someone can be someone who goes to church, uh, maybe even reads the Bible, maybe has been part of Bible studies, has served a church, has been on mm -hmm. worship teams, or all right. sorts of things. But maybe they actually have not made that decision to follow Jesus and really give mm. them, or really give Jesus their whole heart and life. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a really important question because what it gets down to is, well, what what does it mean to follow Jesus, and have we done that? And yeah. so, uh, so of course there is a moment of decision. So what it means to follow Jesus? Well, the way Jesus himself put it is that he said, if anyone wants to come and follow me, mm. they've got to take up their cross, yeah. deny themselves <laughs> every single day, and then you can come and follow me. Mm. Now um, we think today we think of the cross as like it's like nice jewelry. We have them hanging. <laughs> up in our church buildings, but uh, at the time of Jesus, the cross was literally an execution device. That right. th there, there was no other symbolism around the cross. There was no, yeah. like, it, it wasn't a religious symbol. It was an execution device. So it'd be a yeah. little bit, uh, like, the, the language that he's using would feel a little bit like if Jesus today said to us, I want you to take up your execution chair and follow me. Like, it would yeah. just feel so jarring to hear someone say, like, hey, you want to be my follower? Then, like, you need to you need to live in the execution chair. <laughs> like, right. you're like, wait, what? Right. What are you talking about, man? Hmm. And of course, he then later then did go to the cross. So he showed us this example of what it means to literally lay down your own life. Hmm. Um, so what he's saying is that there is, there's a version of yourself. There's this kind of selfish, narcissistic, self-focused, hmm. sin-focused uh, version of who you are that you have to lay that down. Hmm. So you, it's essentially... Uh, you know, God, not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. And then the Bible does say that if we confess with our mouth and believe with our heart that Jesus mm. is Lord and that he's been raised from the dead, we will be saved. Right. And I think a lot of people have heard that part of it. That's why I wanted to start with Jesus's uh, call yeah. of following him, because do we need to confess with our mouth and believe with all of our heart? We absolutely do. Yeah. Um, but if that's all you've done, and then you haven't then laid down your life and denied yourself and died to your own ways, mm -hmm. then you've actually missed out on what this call of Jesus is to follow him. And then not only that, once you've made that decision and you said, mm -hmm. I'm willing to like lay my old life behind, um, to repent is actually the biblical word. Like, I'm going to turn away from my old life and embrace the life of Christ. That's the exciting part yeah. for me, because yeah. the gospel isn't just someday when you die, you get to go to heaven. No, the gospel is that heaven comes to you right now, yes. yeah. that the Holy Spirit comes to live in your life, that you are entering the kingdom of God when you make that decision, hmm. and you you become a new creation in Christ. You are now a Hallelujah. new... Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. like you're a citizen awesome. of heaven immediately when you become his follower. Yeah. Um, so when you've actually crossed that line of faith, you become a citizen of heaven, you become his disciple, and um, and you become a new creation in yeah. him. And, and that's all received by faith. It's not by works, though works do come along with our faith. Mm -hmm. uh, this is by grace through faith. And so that, I mean, that is the gospel. Yeah. And so when we can embrace that, um, I, I mean, I remember the moment that I embraced it, 
and I was, you know, I was depressed and I was, uh, hmm. I actually used to do witchcraft before I became a believer. Hmm. I struggled with my sexuality. Like I wondered if I was bisexual before I became a believer. Hmm. And when I gave my life to Christ, I literally said, God, I don't even know what to do with all of this, but I hmm. lay it at your feet. And I want to embrace awesome. the life that you have for me. Yeah. And it literally felt like an exchange. Yeah. And so Man. that that's the invitation of Jesus. It's good. Yeah. That's so great. We're choosing to follow, and that's a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you're hearing this for the first time and you're going, man, I, I've not heard the gospel that way. Like, you want to talk to someone about it, like, we encourage you to reach out to us. We'd love Please to do. share a little bit more or talk with you or pray with you. Um, we're at ChristTheRock.org. You can find our, our contact information there. Yeah, and on Facebook is on also Facebook. a really easy place to just reach out to us. We have a whole team who would be more than happy to just interact with you about those questions. Yep, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so making that decision, man, it really is a head level change where you're going, okay, I'm choosing to follow. But mm -hmm. like you said, there's an exchange happening and this is, you know, the first time I'm doing something about it. Mm -hmm. Volitionally, I'm going, okay, I'm going to make a choice. Yes. Um, but that is the moment where you're going, I'm turning from, I'm repenting of these sins and I'm turning from this lifestyle mm -hmm. where I am a part of the kingdom of evil. Like I am a part of following um, the devil and following the evil in this world that is just mm -hmm. so apart from Christ. Yes. And then when you do that, you set yourself apart. So now you're a disciple. Now you are a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we talked about this in one of the earlier episodes of how Jesus came at a time where there was this rabbinical culture. Mm -hmm. And he actually gave that invitation to his disciples as a rabbi to say, yeah. come follow me. Yeah. Um, and that meant something. That meant something then that maybe we don't really realize it means now. So would you mm -hmm. unpack that a little bit for us? What does sure. it mean to follow after Jesus as the rabbi? Well, there is this really interesting phrase that they used in first century Israel, and it was a blessing. Uh, they would say to people, may you be covered by the dust of your rabbi, mm. which uh, sounds super strange to us. Uh, but the idea was that uh, if you were a disciple, you had a rabbi, and you wanted to be like your rabbi. Mm. So you were going to eat like them, talk like them, think like them, dress like them. You were going to do everything like them, and you were going to follow them. Like, mm. I mean, the, the, the invitation Literally. was, come yep. follow me. <laughs> yep. And so it was literal. Like, I'm, I'm going to go with you wherever you go. So then the idea was that you would be following your rabbi so closely that you'd literally be covered in their dust as they walked down the road. Because, you know, in the Middle East at that time, and even today, a lot of roads are just sandy roads. Hmm. So you, they, you kick up dust when you walk. And so it's like, follow, follow your rabbi so closely Hmm. that you are being covered in their dust literally, but then metaphorically that um, you are emulating their lifestyle so much that it is as if you've been covered in their dust in every area of your life. Hmm. So that's kind of the idea is like, that's yeah. how closely you need to be following this rabbi. And the other, the other crazy part about that hmm. though, is that usually rabbis would pick the best of the best. Like the, the, the top students that would show up in these, uh, you know, Jewish schools, um, those were the ones that the rabbis chose as their disciples. And right. when Jesus said to fishermen and tax collectors and zealots, right. like these kind of rejects or, uh, I mean, some of them were kind of considered the outsiders and rejects mm -hmm. of society. Some of them were just tradesmen. Like, you know, they weren't necessarily like considered Stumbled. outcasts. They were yep. just, they were just the people who were making the economy work. Yeah. And, um, they weren't big leaders. They weren't, you know, hmm. movers and shakers. Uh, and yet it was these kind of people that Jesus said, come and follow me hmm. and I will make you fishers of people. And so, so they, in their mind, they would be thinking, oh, wow, this is like a rabbi inviting me to follow him. Yeah. And t today hmm. it would be like if Elon Musk came or Jeff Bezos or somebody said, hey, I, I want I want you to come follow me, come work for me hmm. and I'm going to turn you into a billionaire. And then you'd be I, like, well... <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, well, no, I like, that. Yeah. Yeah, I like my minimum wage job. Like, this is, <laughs> this is fine. Yeah. So to, to me, like, the, I think in our culture, we don't really understand how, like, how much of an honor it would be to have a rabbi come and invite hmm. you to follow them. Um, that's like, because in their society, the rabbis were the most honored, revered, respected people. Hmm. So to have a rabbi come and invite you to follow him, of course, you were going to want to be covered in the dust of the rabbi. You were going to follow them as closely as you could. Do the best you could. And do the best you could to yeah. be exactly like them. Hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. So following Jesus then for us today, 
I mean, that metaphor is like just immersing yourself in mm-hmm. who Christ is and where he wants to lead you. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and you know, so I, I just want to ask you this too. It, was there like sacrifice in that, in following a rabbi back in the day? Or was it just a privilege? Because then Jesus sets this up and it's like, hey, deny yourself, pick up your cross. I mean, it does feel like mm-hmm. a heavy invitation too, in the sense that you're, you're dying to self in order yeah. to follow me. Yeah. There's some sacrifice in that. Totally. Was that a cultural thing as well, that you're you're leaving some things behind to be like the rabbi? Oh, 100%. And I think that, um, you know, like we see that in that original call of the disciples in Matthew 4, where they leave behind their nets and they come and follow him. Sure. And again, we have to remember that that was after the biggest catch of fish that they ever had. Right, yeah. Like, so it'd hmm. be like if on your best day of sales or your best day of whatever your job is, that's when Jesus says, now is the time to come and leave all that behind. Does that mean following Jesus means we all have to quit our jobs and sell our houses? And yeah. Not necessarily, but sometimes, yes, sometimes yeah. that is what he'll call people to do. Yeah. But I, I think that within that, though, we also have to remember that um, in that time period, though, uh, people like your family would have been like, yeah, go do that. Like if, hmm. you know, like if Elon Musk said, I want you to sell your house, you know, quit your job and come work for me and I'll make you a billionaire you'd be like, well, the trade-off is worth it. Hmm. And, uh, or like similar to like people entering the military. Okay. Like there's there's like sort of this, like we want you to leave your old way of life behind. We kind of have to break you down a little bit. You have to sacrifice and, mm-hmm. you know, and then we're going to turn you into something else. Hmm. So yes, I, I think that we can't, we can't fool ourselves into thinking I can follow Jesus without having to sacrifice whatever it is I came to the table with when he gave me sure. that invitation. Sure, sure. And it's obviously for the bigger cause, Mm -hmm. right? And it's for the mission of saving the world. Yes. You know, so when you think about it, it's like high call, but Mm -hmm. um, high challenge. You know, there's this concept in disciple making. It talks about Jesus Mm. being really full of invitation and also full of challenge. And we see this in the following. Mm -hmm. It's follow me, deny yourself. Yep. Uh, you know, be a part of this kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. Be a part of the kingdom now, today, mm-hmm. which means all the blessing and the honor and the glory of being mm-hmm. a son or daughter of the Most High. Mm-hmm. Being able to see the most miraculous things happen yeah. on this earth because we're a part of that kingdom, but it does come at a cost. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that Absolutely. invitation is really true of us today too. So if we're gonna follow, if we're gonna follow Jesus, I think there's a few things that we need to kind of get as the lay as the groundwork of I, being able to identify. I am following Jesus because I see these things in my life. I see these patterns, this lifestyle. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, and one of them is just that as a follower, we would know His voice. Mm. And I think this can be kind of a difficult one to talk about in, in Christendom, you know, in the Christian community, because, yeah. you know, someone might say, man, I hear from God all the time. Well, what does that mean to you? You know, yeah. and, and you hear from him in the stock market or you hear from him, you yeah. know, in your lottery ticket yeah. or you hear from him in the word of God. Or God told me. God you know, told me. Pe- people throw that phrase out there. And so it could be God told sure. me to sell all my stuff. God told me to buy this new car. God hmm. told me, uh, and you know, I, I remember a season where I was a youth pastor and then a young adult pastor. Hmm. And man, the, the amount of times that I would have someone come up to me and say, God told me I got to marry this person. Now, I'm not against <laughs> that because I actually had a moment where I felt like God told me my wife was going to huh. be my wife. But guess what? I didn't tell her that till years later. Yeah, you're like, let me make sure. First. Yeah, I mean, I, I literally just waited until God fulfilled hmm. what he told me. But uh, but I've, I've had situations where someone came up to me and said, hey, uh, this person told me that God told them that we're going to get married. Yep. So yep. this whole voice of God thing is tricky, right? So, yeah, and what does that mean? I mean, I just... So, you know, so you have this in scripture where God's saying, my sheep listen to my voice. Hmm. I know them and they follow me. Yeah. Um, how can we be following him if we're not hearing from him? I mean, at some level, we have to know his voice and we yeah. have to know God is telling me to do this thing or to mm-hmm. go to this place. And it's not always this, uh, you know, supernatural. Or I literally heard the audible voice of God right now, mm-hmm. but it might be through a scripture. It might be through a conversation with another Christ follower. Mm-hmm. It might be through the conviction of the spirit that you're going, man, I must do this thing or mm-hmm. God's calling me over here. Um, but, you know, for me, I, I actually I did have a moment in ministry where I thought, OK, I actually am hearing from God right now that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And it was really in getting involved in discipleship. Um, I, I got involved in the church more so in missions when I got started. Sure. And love the mission. 
and I love, love, love the mission. And so I'm so fired up about it naturally. I'm like, this is where I got to be. I got to be out here doing missions, telling people about Jesus, sharing the yeah. gospel. Mm. Um, but at some point, there was a, a corner turn for me where I'm going, how am I going to be really effective in that? Mm. And I really believe the best strategy for seeing the gospel reach all nations is through discipleship, is through making yeah. disciples of Jesus. And so I did have a moment where I was just me and the Lord, and I was praying, and I actually, I, I had actually just turned 30. It was my 30th birthday. And I was going, man, how cool that you've brought me to this place, God, in my life. And I heard God go, man, this is the beginning. This is mm -hmm. just the beginning for you. Mm. And you got a lot of ministry years ahead of you. Well, that means something to me, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. in it for the long haul now, right? Yeah. I know that God is saying, hey, be a part of this. And, and I don't know all the details of it, but mm -hmm. I trust that I heard his voice in that moment. And those do get me through some of the tough times, some of the yes. moments where you're going, man, this is hard work being in ministry. Mm -hmm. um, what about you? I mean, what does it look like for you in hearing God's voice? Sure. I, I mean, I think I've been hearing his voice ever since I became a believer. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's just learning how to trust and really hmm. discern it um, because like there's just been moments where he told me something. And so again, like that's like, it's almost like playing with dynamite because it's like, well, that kind of a statement can right. be used so abusively. But um, in hmm. my mind, uh, the, the, you know, in the New Testament, when it talks about the word of God, there's actually two words that are used for the word word. <laughs> um, okay. Is that uh, when we're talking about the written word, we're going to say logos. Okay. Yep. Uh, when we're talking about the spoken word or the active voice of God, we're going to talk about the rhema word. Okay. And uh, so the like what you just said, like when God said, hey, Courtney, I need you to be focused on discipleship. This yeah. is going to be a huge part of your calling. Yeah. That's the rhema word of God. That's the mm. rhema voice of God coming to you. But the only way we can truly know mm. the rhema voice is to test it against the logos voice. Mm. Meaning the Logos word of God, the written word of God yeah. that we have in the Bible, if God, if you feel like God tells you, quote yep. unquote, something, and then um, it doesn't line up with yep. God's word that we have revealed to us in the scriptures, then I'm... 100% positive that that's not something God told you. Right. So right. so it's it's just a quick test. Hmm. Like when, whenever you're like, oh, I'm not sure, or someone comes up to you and says, God told me to tell you X, Y, and Z. Well, uh, you got to test it against scripture, which Paul tells us to do that. He said, test everything. Hmm. Don't treat prophecies yes. with contempt, but test everything. Yep. And that's why he was excited about the Bereans, because he said, these are the ones who tested everything that I said against the scriptures. Hmm. So uh, it all does align. It all yeah. does come together when we yeah. really take it holistically. But yeah, if we're going to follow Jesus, we've got to learn how to hear and know his voice. Yeah. And I think part of that, at least, you know, a conviction for me is that first part of John 10 saying, my sheep listen to my voice. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, you know, yeah. a conviction. How often do I sit down and actually just listen? I mean, how much mm -hmm. quiet time or quiet space do I have in my life to go, God, tell me <laughs> what you'd like me to do mm -hmm. or where you'd like me to be or yeah. why you have me here. Yeah. Um, and so I think we, we do have to grow in that in our fellowship of the Lord, that we're growing in our understanding of hearing his voice. Um, and then the next piece coming out of hearing that is that we would obey it. Yeah. That we would act on it. And yeah. so, you know, there's this part of being a disciple and following Christ mm -hmm. that really is obedience in action. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's easier said than done sometimes, right? <laughs> so, a little bit. you know, you have Jesus who says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus taught a lot of things, right? <laughs> There's a lot of commands. Yeah. Um, but that if, if we do love the Lord, if we do hear his voice, if we are in relationship with him, we are going to trust that. And I think mm -hmm. trust is a big thing. And we're going to obey that what he's asking us to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it looks really clear that, you know, man, I can see how this invitation to this neighbor would be something that'd be super easy and helpful. And they're going to come to church. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's going to be the moment where you're going, I have to do what? Mm -hmm. You know, I have to go confront so-and-so because there's a conflict or I have to go confess my sin to somebody or a group of people or, what. Yeah. you know, I, I have to obey what? Mm -hmm. um, but it's in those moments that God is building courage in us to be a lifestyle disciple yeah. who's also going to model some of these things, humility and obedience to the people that we're discipling. Yeah. Well, so, recently uh, I got to help lead a discipleship group with a guy here at our church, Christ the Rock. And um, we were talking about the different people we wanted to invite to our group. And mm. um, I invited a guy to the group that when the guy showed up, um, uh, he, he looked at him and he, was, he just felt convicted. Huh. And I was, like, I was like, hey, man, what's going on? And he goes, what's crazy is I saw that guy at church. 
I felt like the Holy Spirit told me to invite him to our group. Wow, yeah. <laughs> and I just felt intimidated for some reason. He's like, I didn't know the guy. And he's like, I just... He's like, I just felt like, oh, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just thinking to myself, like, oh, I need to invite this guy. And yep. he's like, which doesn't really make sense because I don't know him. I don't right. really know who he is. Why would I think out of this guy, out of the whole congregation, would I think? He goes, but I ignored it, and I didn't obey hmm. the voice of the Lord. And then, so then God tells me, God hey, somebody else. make sure yeah. you invite this guy to the group. So God will always, like, make sure that his will yep. is taking place. But it's just huh. funny to me that... Um, that obedience piece is so important because that's like where we're actually putting our faith to work. Mm -hmm. Like we're saying, I heard yes. the voice of God and now I'm obeying. And, and that's really like part of like what it means to live righteously, to live the intentional life is like we yes. actually have to work that out. Yes. And I mean, I, I'm going to tell you every time you have an opportunity for your faith to grow in watching God move and change things because of your obedience, mm -hmm. you will be just blessed out of your socks for that, mm -hmm. you know, because it's oh, yeah. like, oh, God used me to do what? Mm -hmm. um, but it's not easy. And it feels like, again, that kind of invitation challenge where there's some kind of contradiction there and it feels mm -hmm. messy. And yeah. But if we want to be people that are actively living out the gospel, we need to challenge ourselves to be obedient to what God's calling us to do. And mm -hmm. that means it is going to be messy. This is a war that we're waging, mm -hmm. right? And this is a God's kingdom against the kingdom of darkness. And if we're going to be a part of that, it means getting in the trenches a little bit and being willing to be uncomfortable for the sake of the kingdom. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's knowing God's voice, there's being obedient, you know, mm -hmm. and we talked about this a little bit earlier too, just really, um, Jesus is saying, anyone who wants to be my disciple has to follow me. And anyone who wants to be my disciple has to deny themselves. Yeah. And so there's sacrifice in this. We have to deny our flesh is really mm -hmm. the big thing. Mm -hmm. um, and again, there's there's glory and riches and promise in in blessing in being a Christ follower. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the goodness in contrast with our self and our sense of self and our that fleshly war and battle. Mm -hmm. um, so anything you want to add to that? I mean, that feels like a, a tall order. <laughs> it, well, it is a tall order, but here, here's what it also is. It's also the recipe for freedom. Yeah. Hmm. So like when, when I think of obedience, I think of freedom. Because I, I think that when we come to Christ, we, we feel it and hear it the exact opposite. Hmm. We hear obedience to Christ and we're like, oh, man. Like, so Sounds I don't get, to, I don't get that fun anymore. Yeah. Everything's going to be difficult and <clears throat> scary. And he's just <clears throat> going to continue to ask me to do things that I don't want to do, um, which there's a truth to that. Cause <clears throat> a lot of like, there's a part of us that doesn't want to do the things that God calls us to do because yeah. we have a flesh, we have a sin nature. Yeah. Um, but here's the crazy part. Our sin nature is an absolute tyrant. I mean, think about think right. about in your life any time that you've fallen into like a pattern of sin, like just like flat out like addiction or just sin sin pattern that you could not get out of, and mm -hmm. you knew it was destroying you and relationships around you. And um, when you think about those times, it's like there is nothing good about that. Like it, it might have started fun, but uh, sin right. will sin's like a little kitten that we bring into a cage with us, and then it turns into a lion. Like yeah, and then it will yes. just tear us apart, Reeks and havoc. we have nowhere to go. We have nowhere to get away from it, and mm. um, and that's where the Apostle Paul in the Book of Romans he's talking about how here's the things I want to do, and I know God's calling me to do them, but I don't do them. Yeah. And then there's all these things I don't want to do that I wind up doing. And who's going to mm. save me from this body of death? Like who's going to save me from this prison that I find myself in? Thanks right. be to God that Jesus right. came to free us from ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And so, like that—that's the—that's like the like yeah. mind blowing yeah. moment where you're like, oh, I'm actually the the hmm. one I need freedom from. And then the craziest part of all of that, then this is part of the gospel as well, is that then by denying yourself, you actually find your true self in Jesus. Hmm. Like he, he actually knows who he created you to be yes. and the yeah. world's been lying to you for years Yeah. and now it's time to actually embrace the way and the person and the identity that God has created for you. Yeah. And so I think hmm. that we can look at this as just like, this is really hard. Okay, fine. I'll double down and try to do it. Or we could say, this is, it, this is a pathway to freedom. And right. uh, there's no yeah. other way that I'd rather live. It's the better life. It's the better yeah, life. Yeah, man, that's so good. Yeah, so the intentional life, it yeah, really is. It's the better it life. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Well, thanks so much. That recaps our episode here on following Jesus. Uh, and I, next week, we are going to break down the second part of that definition, being changed by Jesus. Mm. Um, and so we want to keep diving, doing a deeper dive on our definition so we're really clear on what do we mean by these pieces. Yeah. And we feel like coming out of this, we know what it means to be a disciple that's really embracing this full invitation. So we'll see you next time. See you then. Mm-hmm.